Hello, you all. Welcome back to Let's Deal With It. Okay. I want to be very careful what I'm about to say. We are still in the dispensation of grace. Yes, we are. And thank the good Lord, God Almighty, that we are. You guys hear me? Because I remember when many of us thought that 2017 was it. I knew I wasn't ready. I knew I wasn't. Uh, I was hoping that God would have mercy on me. And who's to say he wouldn't have? Who's to say he would have? That's why we don't want to gamble with our salvation. And... Uh, this is what I know about the very character and nature of the Almighty Yahweh. David was a man, he said, after his own heart. He not only took another man's wife, impregnated her, but he premeditated first degree murder, how to do away with that woman's husband and he was in David's army Uriah I think that's his name Uriah he put him on the front line of the battle in the, in the thick of the battle making sure that he was killed thank you Holy Spirit Another thing is this, you all. We all deserve hell. Every last one of us. The Bible says, is there any righteous? No, not one. And then you have those of us in our past, who's to say? The Lord knows that we were or had been self-righteous, thinking that we were a goody good, goody good two shoes. And you know what I'm saying, you all, we are all guilty of things like this. And you say, well, where are you going with all this, Marsha? Why are you saying all this? Because my Bible tells me this. And keep in mind what I begin this video saying. We are still in the dispensation of the grace and the mercy of the Lord. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, Yah is faithful and just to forgive us. And not only that, he will cleanse our conscience from all, it said, all dead works. And if there ever was a dead work, oh my, that is a dead work. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says, I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And I will forgive whom I will forgive. And if I look a little tired, you all, I'm not apologizing, but I apologize because I'm tired. When you minister like that and you give it all you got <clears throat> with everything in you, you take a beating. The flesh take a beating and it's a good beating because we are to buffet and keep the flesh dead every day throughout the day. So. The good Lord says he will give more grace to the humble, but he will resist the proud. Oh, yes. That's why a lot of people, mainly Christians, they're in a lot of trouble. Yep. Yep. Being prideful in one's own mind and heart is very dangerous 
for all of us. No one is excluded. I don't care if you're a bishop, a preacher, a pastor, leadership. The Bible says to guard our heart because out of it flows the issues of life. And in this last hour, because you best believe we in the last hour, the one that can deceive us the most is ourselves. Ain't that something? Yes. So you all, I don't care who you are. If you took one shot, two shots. Let me tell you something. If anyone knows in the chambers, in the deepness of our soul and our heart and spirit, that we are godly repentant. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. And let me tell you another thing the word of God says. Repentance is a gift. Do you see how great the mercy of Yahweh is and Jesus is? is? Do you see that? Great is his mercy. And I'm going to take my time because when someone comes to really see their, I'll be right there, neighbor. When someone comes to see the depravity of their heart, mind, soul, their very lives, and they come to a holy and merciful Yahweh, in the name of his son, and by obviously the conviction of the Holy Spirit, do you really think that the Lord Almighty, who is full of forgiveness, mercy, compassion, would reject such a soul? No. No one will ever convince me of that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I know too much about him for you to make me doubt him. The Bible says that the Lord can save the chiefest of sinner, of sinners. The most horrendous person, as long as they are six feet above the ground, they can still receive the salvation of Jesus Christ. That's why we can't write anyone off. We can't. Now, does it mean that we should be in close proximity of people who are toxic and abusive and dysfunctional? No. But in our heart and in our minds, we should never write off a soul when they still live in. That's why I know these Christians out here in the brick and mortar, they're in a lot of trouble. They're in a lot of trouble because the greatest commandment is love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then to love others. That's right. We gonna wait in the water. Because I'm telling you all, Christians, if you don't truly love people and truly and authentically forgive people. Who are you, God? No, you're not. And if a holy Yahweh, the Almighty, forgives people, who are we not to forgive? Yep, I'm going to wait in the water. So, it behooves us to ask the Lord, like David said, search me, O God, and see if there be any wicked or evil thing in me, and take it out. That's all our prayer. Oh, it better be. Because some of the most prideful, arrogant, harsh, 
mean, nasty, unforgiving Christians gonna be left behind. You don't see in the Bible where it says you have to like your enemies. Who in their right mind would like an abusive person? That means something's wrong with you. But what we must do is forgive their acts of transgressions, their sins against us. I believe we don't all sinned against someone. And definitely, we've all sinned against God. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And this is why the Bible says, He that hides his sins. He that hides his sins will not prosper. Mm -mm. And that's why David says, Cleanse me from secret faults. Secret sins. Read Psalms. Read them. David sought the forgiveness of Yahweh with all that was in him. He knew, he knew, he knew, he knew that he sinned royally. Blood was on both of his hands. He couldn't even build the temple of the Lord. But the Lord said, I'm going to tell you what, David. I will let your son build my temple. Ain't that something? You all, the Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Whole lot of mean Christians, unfortunately, not just gonna be left behind, but they gonna bust hell wide open. So, this is not the time to stay in the mindset or the condition of one's heart and soul of pride and arrogance. Nope. <laughs> this is why the Bible admonished us to confess our sins one to another. This is why the Bible tells us, submit one to another. You don't see that today. People think they don't have to answer to nobody. That they can treat folks like garbage. From bishops, no, I don't, I'm not going to start with the bishop first. From apostles, to pastors, to preachers, to bishops, to deacons. Folks in the choir nasty. Oh, yes. Thinking they something so wonderful. But you all, there was two people who prayed in the Bible. One was a religious soul. And he looked up to heaven. Thank you that I don't do this, God. And I thank you I don't do that, God. And then there was a man who wouldn't even lift his eyes up to the Lord. Felt that he wasn't even worthy to be praying to God. But he cried out and said, forgive me a sinner. And the Bible say he heard that man's prayer but he did not hear the prayer of the self-righteous. Uh, uh, he was a leader, the one that was self-righteous and said, I thank you that I don't do this and I don't do that. God didn't hear his prayers. Just proves when he says, he will give more grace to the humble and that when we authentically, humbly confess our sins to a holy, holy, holy Yahweh, 
you will find mercy and forgiveness from him. So I don't care who you are. Don't allow the enemy to punk you and coward you, blackmail you, bully you, and lie to you. The Lord is long suffering with us all. Do you hear me? So for the couple or few people who have admitted that they have done this, you go to the Lord. You lay on your face and you cry out to a merciful, loving, and compassionate almighty Yahweh in the name of his holy son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, by the very power and strength of his Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh, yes. I know I'm right about it. Because if we were in the tribulation, it would be, it would be over. It would be over for those who have partaken in that. Ain't that something? Here we are saying, Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. Please come, Lord. And we do want him to come. But guess what? That's why the Bible says, wait patiently for your Lord. So pray. Pray for those who cannot pray for themselves. Yes, Lord. We cannot imagine what is getting ready to go down. And it's coming because he said it. He said it. Everything in that Bible is going to come to pass. Do you hear me? Every, t j every jittle, every jot, tittle jot, everything. As he said it, it's going to be. You can tell people don't know the Lord. You can tell what they got is a form of godliness. They have no fear of the Lord. Number one, they wouldn't keep sinning in this hour. Number two, they sure enough wouldn't be mistreating, especially his children. And do you know the Bible says the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Pray to the Yah of the harvest to send labors. You see that? And that is exactly why he have delayed. And you say, how do you know God delayed? The Bible says, if the master of the house tarries, delay, Will the servants begin to beat up on the other servants? And you mockers and scoffers, you hateful, mean, unkind Christians, woe and another woe. Oh, yes. Yes. Leaving your unbelievable, unkind, ridiculous comments attacking his beloved saints who are giving it all they got for you to repent and for those who are blinded by the God of this world and you are going to attack such servants and that's another thing Holy Spirit talk to me all these pastors preachers and teachers and evangelists and leaderships. My goodness. You can understand why the Bible said don't desire this. 
for you will be held at a greater accountability. Ain't that something? All the money they have squindalized out of God's children. Folks can't pay their bills. And I know for a fact, I know for a fact people who have been hurting financially and they would go to their church and they would deny them help. And they were avid tithers and givers. Let me tell you guys something. I lived 14 consecutive years in California. I've been to Bishop Blake's church, Fred Price, Jack Hayford, Joel Knowles, jo Noel Jones. I done been around in these churches, you all. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I would say Church on the Way, Jack Hayford's Church. That is where I learned and began to learn true worship. And you say, what do you mean? Because sometimes in the culture of people of color, there is so much buffoonery, nothing but high emotionalism. Because when they leave the brick and mortars, they is twice the son of, not son as in male, twice the individual of hell before they went in. You say, how can you say that? Because there's no change. That's what got us folks, colored folks, in trouble. Oh, yes. Should he tarry, I'm going to expose all of this. We always want to be entertained. Who got the best choir? Who can sing the best? Instead of letting the folks up there who got a pretty decent voice and they lives is clean to get up there and worship. Cause I'm gonna tell you something about worship and praise. I'm gonna tell you what the Bible say. They that worship the Lord must worship him in truth and in spirit. It would be better to put a soul or a vessel up in a praise team in a choir who got clean hands and a pure heart. Did I say they perfect? I didn't say that. Not one of us are perfect. We are in a, the process of being made whole in our souls. Yes, in our characters. So, because we cared about a sound and not the heart and the spirit and the soul, that's how the devil got in the church through the music. Oh, yes. Yes, people of color. That's how he got up in there. Yes. Ain't that something? But I'm not going to go any further with this. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And should he tarry? Oh, my. Oh, my. I mean, we done got so crazy. No, P said, wait, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> anyway, I don't care who you are. I don't care about those of you who are backslidden. Humble yourself and come on back to the Lord. Don't keep saying tomorrow. I'll give my For tomorrow is not promised. Give your life today. For tomorrow very well might be 
too late. And some of you know where those words came from. Marvin Winans. When I tell you those gospel groups started out right, many of them. Fred Hammond, the Marvin uh, Winans. Oh yeah. The Clark sisters. Many of them started out right, just like you got pastors who started out right. And then the riches and the glamours of this world got a hold of their heart and they compromised the spirit of God in them. Yes, they did. Oh, yes. And you wonder why the Lord says the love of money is the root of all evil. I don't wonder. I don't wonder. And it's not having money. It's money having us. Oh, yes. Kirk Franklin done lost his mind. It's unreal. And you know what I think the biggest problem in the brick and mortar ministries? A bunch of yes men. Nobody will hold each other accountable and pull each other to the side and say, that's not right. That's not of the Lord. Oh, yes, I know I'm talking right. Long as we eating good and living good, that's not my problem. Yes, it is. Because the Lord made you a sheepdog. These pastors have taken their titles way too far. You're not anyone great. What you should have did is what Yeshua did and what he said. The son of Yahweh, God wrapped in flesh, stood and stooped low to wash the feet of his disciples. And he said, he who desires to be great and the kingdom of Yahweh must be a servant to all. You greedy, pussing wolves in them pulpits, standing in a holy spiritual place like that, who have raped and robbed Yahweh's children, scattered his sheep, especially the ones that told his children to take that thing. If you all don't repent, there is a special fire for you all. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. Because if anybody should have been telling the saints, wait a minute, wait a minute, this thing here is of the devil. And most of you didn't even see him coming. You know why? Because your heart was corrupted and compromised by the 501c3. Yes, you've been compromised for years. And so when that book came around, you were not able to hear the voice of your master. Yes. And I pray that all of you will repent and publicly, why don't you stand in that pulpit and tell those who you led greatly astray, we must seek the Lord. It's too bad you all are not having uh, prayer vigils anymore, sh the shut-ins. I remember them when I was six, seven, eight years old in Brooklyn, New York, 
how folks would bring their pillows and their Bibles and would stay in the house of the Lord for three and five days. Oh no, not today. Not today. I tell you, you all, it's over. It's finished. And while we have the little time we have, we better redeem it. Redeeming by making sure we right and out here in these streets and in the byways pulling in souls by the skin of their tails. Yes. So I'm going to end it by saying again, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you've just been backslidden and away from the Lord. The prodigal son was eaten in the pig's pen. And the Bible said he came to his right mind and said, even in my father's house, the servants eat good. And he got up from that place of destitute and sin and filth. And he humbled himself and made his way back to the father's house. And I advise all prodigal sons and daughters, go on back to the father by the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ and his precious Holy Spirit. And he will receive you. And you know who, who knows he will? Satan and his demons. And they is telling a whole lot of folks right now, you must be crazy. You've been out here tricking and twerking and drinking and lying and cussing and fornicating, cheating on your wife and your husband for years. God's not going to receive you. It's a wrap for you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> he is a liar. And the father of all lies. <laughs> Do you hear me? You don't listen to the father of lies. You listen to the creator of truth mercy and grace and while you yet have a little time repent seek him and ask him to forgive you and do you know he's so good he said he will not only forgive us but he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness all means all Come on back home, prodigal sons and daughters. Amen. You'll be eternally grateful that you did. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, I know this is him. And for the beloved one that said, will he take me? Will he take me in our pot's home? He will take you. He will take you. You just seek him. Amen. God is full of mercy. That's why the devil mad and all his fallen angels. Because how passionately, how mercifully the Lord loves his human creation. Yes. Yes, indeed. Amen. You seek him with all your heart, and he said you'll find him. Amen. I love you all, and God bless and keep you, and you all keep me lifted up in prayer. I'm not weary, tired, but I'm not weary in doing good. Just a little tired. Need some rest, because if you guys knew the things that I was dealing with, you would know greater is he that is in us and he that is in this world. Amen. Can't be no punk in the army of the living Yahweh. <clears throat> no. The Bible says endure hardship as a good soldier. Amen. 
Praise God. I love you all. Bye-bye.